the song it said the blood that Jesus shed for me yeah. way back on Calvary that blood it gives me strength and show from day Every one of my doubts and it comes all of my fears and that same blood when I'm crying reach down and cries oh every tear oh, 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 oh the blood Shoramas be strength thank God for the blood from day Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday today yeah, 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 yeah. it will never 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 lose it's power Cause it reaches to the highest mountain. Yes, it does. And God, it flows, flows to the lowest. No matter where you are, the lowest valley. No matter what your problem is.
to come. And there are a lot of you that heard about it and came on your own accord. But as true as the story may be, if we were to tell the truth of it, there's a lot of people standing in here today with sin in their life. Oh yeah, yeah, you might have kept it quiet, you might not have let anybody know about it, but there's sin in your life. Yeah, you got a right smile and you got the good clothes on, but there's sin in your life. Listen, listen. Oh my. Dancing can't take that sin away. You gotta hear me. Who's crying hallelujah can't take that sin away. This music can't take that sin away. This song can't take that sin away. I don't have enough power to take that sin away. There's only, 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 only one thing. I feel like I'm in church here tonight. for the very first time I found myself likened onto a person who had been set free from a cell the door wide open but somebody forgot to tell me that I could now go free but when I heard the man of God sound the liberty of the Holy Ghost the Spirit of God gripped me down deep and said boy go free and I'm telling you tonight church we have been set free 
And tonight, welcome once again, Rod Parsley as he brings America back to Bible basics and sets the church free. Thank you, Pastor Kaylee. Thank you. Tonight, some of you are going to leave this building with this testimony. I got set free and I didn't even know I was bound. Father, by the perfect person of the Holy Ghost, thank you. Thank you that I need not ask you to come. Thank you that I know you're here. And upon the authority of your word, I bind principalities and powers. <sighs> Suffer them to loose their hold tonight. And we thank you for the blood. Amen. Amen. In order to have an impact on our society, tonight God is calling the body of Christ to rise far above the status quo of church normalcy. We have lived in a society where right has been wrong for so long that righteousness has become the abnormal thing. God commended the remnant church at Thyatira in Revelation chapter 2 because they had not experientially known nor come into the depths of Satan. The devil does have that inner circle of darkened hearts to whom he has imparted the mystery of iniquity and the depths of degradation. And over a period of time, these doctors of damnation have worked like leaven, permeating the mindset of America to the point that we now call evil good and good evil. For instance, we live in a society that abuses children but protects the whale. We have the technology and know-how to build solid, strong houses, but we have weak, sick homes. We're smarter but not wiser. We know more and understand less. We go faster and end up nowhere. We've got the ability to conquer space, but we cannot conquer our own habit. We murder our unborn children, but protect the whales and whooping cranes. Therefore, a door has been opened for the spirit of Antichrist to use demon spirits to wreak havoc, killing and stealing and destroying all the way from international madmen like Saddam Hussein to the polished politicians propagating perverted legislation to the street punk with an assault rifle to the so-called solid citizen who shakes his fist in the face of a holy God. To all of the demonically deranged devotees of hardcore Satanism who come to us from the ranks of doctors and lawyers and politicians and school teachers and preachers. All of this onslaught of evil is too subtle and too sinister to be of human origin. It must be and is the carefully calculated conspiracy of demon spirits. We have children populating our schools living in our homes and attending our churches who are driven daily with destructive thoughts which are inspired by demon spirits. What we call a dysfunctional home. The Bible calls a generational curse. Public education used to have three R's. Reading, writing, and arithmetic. But now they have four. Reading, writing, arithmetic, and reproductive rights. 
Instead of passing out convictions in our classrooms, they're handing out condoms and using your tax dollars to do it. Church, these kind don't come free. You could count on two hands the number of preachers in America that are willing to stand up on national television on 14,000 stations and tell America they're going to hell if they don't repent and have the blood applied to their lives. You better help me tonight. We've taken the bypass in America. Not long ago, I got on one of those things they call a clover leaf. I spent about 30 minutes on it because I couldn't find out how to get off. I'd go around this way and I'd think, well, I better go this way. And I'd go around that way and I'd end up right back where I started. We, we've taken the bypass. God said, if you're going to come out of Egypt, there's only one way to come out and it's straight out. You can't go round the corner and you can't skirt the issue. You've got to come straight out. I want to know tonight, do you want to come out of bondage? I want to know, do you want to make it all the way out? Or do you want to keep one foot back there in Egypt? Oh, we've taken the bypass in America. A liar is no longer a sinner. He's just an extrovert with a lively imagination. Adultery is no longer sex in Hollywood or in 75% of the churches in America. Help me preach somebody. A murderer is no longer a heinous criminal. He's a media event. Don't blame it on poverty. I've heard enough of that. Liar, liar. Some of us were raised so far behind the times June bugs didn't show up to August. We didn't murder anybody. Some of y'all raised so far back in the Georgia woods, you had to use hoot owls for roosters, but you didn't murder anybody. Some of you went to school, you're too poor to pay attention, but you didn't murder anybody. I'm tired of the semantics of pseudo-sociology that want to make you believe because you were born on the wrong side of the tracks and your skin was the wrong color that you just didn't have the economic advantage. Are you going to buy that lie? No. Nehemiah was born the wrong color, from the wrong country, on the wrong side of the tracks, speaking the wrong language. But when it came time to rebuild the broken down walls of the city of Jerusalem, God picked him out and gave him what it take to do the job. Don't you blame it on poverty. So we're living in a time when rebellion against church leaders seems justified. And the pressure and the temptation to withdraw from fellowship is strong. With the crisis raging at a fevered pitch and patience running low. With all of this tension know that Satan has come did you hear me America I said Satan has come in great power presenting your mind with a multiplicity of inordinate fears 
Grotesque images flashing and burning in your imagination. Draining you from peaceful and restful sleep. Leaving you carrying in your countenance a dark cloud of oppression. Leaving you more and more drained and more and more disoriented and more and more confused. When you see these things come to pass, know that spiritual wickedness in high places has come to destroy your life. But help me somebody because there's still a cross that bleeds. There's still a king that redeems. There's still a prayer that's heard and answered and there is still a triumphant victorious church of Jesus Christ against which the very gates of hell itself shall not prevail and we're here tonight to tell the devil we're about to take our nation back has anybody had enough I, no no has anybody had enough has anybody had enough? Are you ready to tell the drug lords in your neighborhood in Atlanta that their time is limited? Are you ready to give them their eviction notices? Are you ready? Mark chapter 8. I get to it in a minute. About verse 36. Jesus had just come from his boyhood home in Nazareth. He had been rejected there, as they have said, can any good thing come out of that dirty, stinky hubble of a hut of a mess, little old stinky town called Nazareth? They said, is not this Joseph's son, a carpenter's boy, a nobody? A no count. You know what they told me? They told me at Bible college. Sure enough, son, don't ever try to pastor. Because you'll embarrass every one of us. Now my church is bigger than their college. Help me preach somebody. You don't have to listen to that. You don't have to, my God, I'm preaching to somebody. You don't have to listen to that. You don't have to be pushed down, pushed back, set aside, left for dead. God has got everything under control. They said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? So he left Nazareth and he went down through Jericho. Down by the Jordan River down through ancient Jericho to that little lake they called the Sea of Genesaret, the Sea of Galilee. It was here that Jesus performed over 80% of his miracles, manifesting mastery over demons and depravity and disease and at the tomb of Lazarus, even over death itself. Flocks of the lame, the halt, the blind, the maimed would come there for the soothing of the hot springs that would issue forth around the Jordan Valley and the Sea of Galilee. So there where the needs were went the tall, lean Galilean, his long locks of Jewish hair flapping in the breeze. It was there around the ten cities of Decapolis just to the north of the Galilee that in the area called Bethsaida that Jesus found a man blind from his mother's womb. He picked up a little bit of dust and spit upon it and made clay and put it on the man's eyes. After he said, do you see? And he said, I see men walking as trees. But Jesus prayed again. And he healed that blind man. He went on further north from the Galilee up towards Caesarea Philippi. And on his way there, he ran into Simon Peter. And it's there that he asked him the riveting question. Simon, whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And Peter answering saith unto him, Some say that thou art Elijah, or John the Baptist, or one of the prophets raised again from the dead. But Jesus, with those gazing, glaring eyes, looked deep into the soul of that fisherman and said, But whom do you say that I am? Peter made the announcement that shook hell. 
Thou art the Christ. Look, that doesn't mean much to 20th century Christians, but it meant a whole lot to a Jewish boy by the name of Peter because he recognized it meant thou art the Christos, the anointed one that destroys every yoke. You are the son of the living God. Give him glory. And it was into that scene that Jesus walked. In the 36th verse of the 8th chapter of the Gospel of Mark, words recorded in red, Jesus said, For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what shall a man Give or offer as an equivalent in exchange for his soul. Look at me tonight. Charles Finney, the greatest evangelist of a bygone generation, was just about to graduate from law school. When one of his professors called him and sat down at his desk, the professor looked over the rim of his glasses at Finney and said, Finney, what are your plans? Charles Finney, about to graduate from law school, said, Well, I'm going to go into private practice. I'm going to make a lot of money. The professor said, That's good. What then? He said, Well, I'm going to take my ease in retirement and live off of my wealth and enjoy my family. That sounds good, said the professor. What then? Well, Finney got a little bit nervous and he said, Well, I suppose after that I'll die. The professor scooted up and leaned over his desk and glared into Finney's eyes and said, that's good. What then? <laughs> Charles Finney glass grasped his head in his hands and ran out. The story is told by a fallen down log and knelt there and began to weep bitter tears of repentance and asked Jesus Christ to come into his heart and be his savior because he recognized the only answer to that riveting question is this. What then? What after death? The judgment. For it is appointed unto man once to die, and after this the judgment. Now, excuse me, America, but the Bible is still true. Excuse me, but it's still relevant for today. And the Bible says, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. The Bible still says. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The judgment. My mind whirls back. I remember how Jesus faced death. And when hell had done its worst, to the best that heaven had to offer. And he lay a dead, cold, stiffened corpse in the borrowed tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. Somehow, from somewhere, came the power. And he kicked the end out of the tomb and went back to his father. But I have to tell you tonight, that's not the only resurrection the Bible talks about. The Bible talks about, preachers, another resurrection. Now, I don't know what your slick-haired, shiny-shoot evangelist told you or your golf-playing pastor, either one. But I'm here to tell you the truth. My Bible says, I would not have you ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep. For we shall not all sleep but we shall be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye 
the trump of God shall sound and the voice of the archangel and the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and the voice of the archangel and the dead in Christ shall rise first and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up, caught up, caught up, caught up into the clouds to be with the Lord and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Let me tell you something. There's a great getting up morning. By and by, Lord, by and by, ain't no grave gonna hold my body down. Talk to me, somebody. Oh, I've got some loved ones that have already been buried, but they had this hope. That's the reason the Bible said, comfort ye one another with this, these words, this blessed hope the Bible talks about. That one day we're going to be walking around on this planet when suddenly graves are going to go to burst and open. Help me somebody. I hope somewhere I'm preaching. I hope somewhere I got a Bible in one hand and a microphone in the other. I hope somewhere along the way, let me tell you something. On that great getting up morning, it won't matter if you're six feet under or 12 miles underneath the crusty surface of this earth in a coal mine or flying around in one of the space shuttles or flying around at 41,000 feet on American Airlines. It won't matter where you are. It won't matter who's around. When the magnificent magnitude of his perfect person sweeps out from north to south and east to west if you're blood bought if you're blood bought if you're blood bought you're coming out of here Enjoy yourself a minute. It don't matter how burdened you are tonight, we're getting ready to leave here. It don't matter what's going on in your body tonight, we're getting ready to get a brand new one. It don't matter what you're going through, you're just going through. We're going to ride, ride on the wild wings of the morning. We're going to make it all the way home, all the way home. We're going to leap like a heart over the everlasting hills of God's glory to suffer no more, to sigh no more, to cry no more, to die no more. We're leaving here. Now, I understand. Be seated. I I understand. Some Christians are like coffee pots. Coffee pots like to percolate. And Christians like to tribulate. But my Bible says, I don't care what so-and-so's book said. Read this book. I said the Bible said. The, the Bible said, he has not appointed us unto wrath. And the first minute the tribulation starts, I'm going to be out of here, brother. I hope. Is anybody going home? I said, does anybody know what it means for gravity to loose its hold? Airliners going to veer off their courses. Typewriters going to point, type pointless facts. I hope God will give me, I want him to get me just up about, about 20 feet. And just let me stop right there. Just for a minute. Because I got some folk I want to wave by to. I want to tell them, I told you so. I told you so. I told you so. I told you so. I told
But that's not the only resurrection the Bible talks about. At the rapture of the church begins the tribulation period, seven years of God's determined dealings with the nation of Israel. Quit worrying about who the Antichrist is. You're not going to be here anyway. People run around all the time trying to figure out if this man's letters in his name count. Who cares? He's some big, fat, blubbery thing without a backbone that's destined for destruction, defeat, and the bottomless pit. I don't care who he is. Three and a half years into the seven years of the tribulation period, there's the resurrection of the 144,000 Jewish evangelists. That's not the only resurrection. After that, there's another resurrection. The last day of the tribulation period, Daniel's 70th week. The last day of the last week, the last day of the tribulation period, starts off a milky gray. People can't see. The two witnesses have been slain in the streets of Jerusalem, the prophets of God. The world is having a party. Major networks by satellite broadcasted around the world. And the Bible said that they leave their bodies lying dead in the streets of Jerusalem with the cameras fastened upon them as the world has a party because the last voice of God on the planet is dead. Read your Bible, people. But all of us... Suddenly, God sends something from another world and it hits their body and there's all the television cameras and every television people are giving each other presents because they're dead but all of a sudden the eyes pop open and the arms stop moving. And they stand up from the dead and they start walking. But with every step they take, they're a little higher off the planet. Until the Bible says that heaven will be rent open. God, I want to preach. Heaven's going to be rent open while the earth waits as those witnesses are resurrected from the dead. Jesus Christ stands up from his throne. Those chariots that haven't ridden the wind since Elijah get pulled out of their stalls. They get harnessed up to gleaming white stallions. The Son of God stands up from his imperial throne and welcomes his witnesses back into the pavilions of glory. I'll remind you, we will have already been there around the marriage supper table of the Lamb for seven years when Jesus says that's it and the last day of the tribulation begins to become the first day of the millennial reign of Jesus Christ my God I'm going to preach Bible said Bible said I saw heaven opened and a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness doth he judge. His name is called the word of God. And the armies which are in heaven followed him upon white horses. Did you hear what I said? The book of Jude said, and the Lord shall descend from heaven and all his saints with him. He's going to slide that long lean Galilean leg over a steaming white stallion. The crack of his whip's going to billow out like the crash of a thousand cannons. And out of the pavilions of glory, we're coming and riding back to this planet he's going to land on the Mount of Olives it's going to split in two and then we're going down through the Kidron Valley up through Temple Mount up through the Eastern Gate on the Temple Mount and he's going to sit down and I'm going to be sitting with him and you're going to be sitting with him and we're going to be sitting with him all his saints with him we're going to rule and reign for a thousand years
But, uh, but, uh, but, uh, I don't believe that, Brother Rob. I don't care what you believe. You don't believe the Bible. There's coming a time when the highway systems of this earth in Atlanta, Georgia, built for the Olympic Games, are going to flap in the breath of God like ribbons in the noonday breeze. But the resurrections aren't over yet. The black hairs on the head of damnation are just about to grow white with horror. Because the Bible said, I saw a great white throne. Coming a time when the world is dying and the moon is bleeding and the seas are seething under the whiplash of fury to spill their dead in the lap of God. Your Bible said death and hell gave up the dead that were in them. Everybody who died without Christ. Already in hell. And they won't want to come out of there. But they're going to come out. Stand before God to give an account of the deeds done in their flesh. Heaven is real. Hell is real. Twelve gates in heaven. No exits in hell. No tears in heaven. No prayers in hell. Light in heaven, darkness in hell, joy in heaven, horror in hell, fellowship in heaven, separation in hell. Hell? We're living in a nation tonight that 80% say they believe in God. 50% believe they're going to heaven. 4% even believe in hell. We've been sold a lie. Hell is real. Bible said the rich man died. Luke 16, Bible said Lazarus died. Everybody is going to die. You're not getting out of here alive. It may be today or it may be tomorrow. It may be next week, next month, next year, ten years from now. But sooner or later, you're leaving here. Now the Bible said that both men begged. One begged in time, that old beggar Lazarus. The other begged in eternity. Let that old leprous Lazarus go dip his finger in a glass of water and touch it to my tongue for I am tormented in these flames why isn't anybody preaching this in America this is not all tiptoeing through the tulips and popping up petunias hell is a reality Jesus quoted from Isaiah in one chapter more than he quoted from any other in his New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And it was the very chapter that claims these words. And hell hath enlarged her borders. Do you know what that means? That means hell is not stagnant. It means hell is hungry. It's hungry. It's increasing its borders. It's making room for you. Hell, a place where men gnaw their tongues for pain. 
Hell, a place where the fire is never quenched. Hell, a place, a place where the worm never dies. Death would be the most welcome visitor in hell, but he never comes. Men will beg to die. They will not be praying. They will be cursing and damning the God who they perceive sent them. Who's there? Adulterers, sorcerers, whoremongers, liars. All have their part in the lake that burneth with fire and brimstone. Can't help it if America doesn't like it in 1996. That's the reason they ought to hear it more. I like what Dr. E.V. Hill said. Dr. E.V. Hill said, I decided I didn't want to go to hell because there's no exit. (laughs) January 25th in Delaware, 49-year-old man by the name of Billy Bailey A double murderer of an 80-year-old man and his 73-year-old wife was led from his cell on death row to have his last meal and told that he requested steak. Well done. Baked potato, peas, ice cream. Having eaten his last meal, he was given the opportunity to make a last statement, which he refused. He was led from his holding cell to a wooden staircase and he began to walk up the 19 steps to the platform. There a bag was placed over his head and the trap door gave way. And at 15 minutes after 12 on the 25th day of January in the state of Delaware, Billy Bailey was hanged. That same week, in Salt Lake City, Utah, a 36-year-old young man was led to his holding cell as the authorities prepared five 30 caliber rifles for this heinous murderer and child rapist. They placed a bag over his head, strapped him to a chair. Loaded those 30 caliber rifles with four loaded live rounds and one blank. placed a markation over his heart. The marksmen drew their marks and the command was given to fire. Four bullets burst through the heart of that 36-year-old young man. When I think about the white throne judgment, The question that penetrates my heart is this. What had you on death row? What did you trade for your soul? 
Your Bible says, fear not him who is able to kill the body. But fear him rather, having killed the body, who is able to cast into hell. Because it's not over when it's over. Everybody is going to spend eternity somewhere. Several weeks ago, a young man by the name of James Harrison convicted of murder in the first degree sat on his death in his death row cell in the Indiana State Penitentiary our breakthrough cameras were allowed in and Deborah Rodriguez uh, one of our breakthrough reporters was allowed to interview James Harrison he looked into the breakthrough camera and said this is what I want to say to the church in America the problem with most Christians is they never read their Bible. And they don't know, said this convicted murderer, now born again and spirit filled. They don't know that the Bible says that if you are guilty of breaking one, Of the laws you are guilty of them all and then he said something that I shall never forget he said pastor Rod please tell them I can't tell them I'm here scheduled to die and there's no hope for me other than that but tell them for me I'm not the only one on death row. There are millions walking around in America living on death row and they just don't know it. Tell them, tell them, he said, tell them. And I came tonight to Atlanta, Georgia to tell them. I want to ask you the question tonight, what has you on death row? Will you tarry with me just a little while? President Clinton and her husband too. President Clinton <laughs> Did you come to get busy? President, are you tired? Are you all right? Yes. Look at your neighbor. Say, are you all right? Yes. The only ones wanting to leave are full of the devil. Just sit right where you are. Yes. President Clinton said, I'm going to give the highest positions in my government. And when I get finished, the people that I will have Positioned in those high places will be a great representation of America. So I want. He said he wanted 25% homosexuals and lesbians. He said it. God, I'm having fun tonight. I got the devil on the run, and I think we prayed so much he's even too weak to squeal about it. I said, so I watched. Because if he's going to give a representation of America, I thought just possibly there would of necessity have to be a born-again, tongue-talking, evangelical Christian in there somewhere. But instead, out of 22 positions, he, he nominated and placed in positions of authority in his government five out of 22 homosexuals and lesbians. And not one. Not one. He 
He's like Jesse Jackson. Showing up at the Million Man March. And I just wanted to ask him, Hey Jesse, where's the rainbow? Wasn't no white faces in that crowd, Jesse. Come on, wasn't no Mexicans allowed. Wasn't no Spanish folk allowed. Wasn't no Jews allowed. Jesse went to the Million Man March and forgot his rainbow. Don't shout me down just because I'm preaching. it is is hatred it's racism it's hatred it's racism to hell with this damnable racism that's being promoted by the politicians of our day what fellowship hath light with darkness what fellowship hath the sons of God with the sons of Belay I'm tired of Farrakhan's lies Lying through your teeth, you bozo in a bow tie. We're not, we're not, we're not buying your lie. We're not going to pray to Allah. No, sir. We're not going to bow our knee. We're not turning toward Mecca. We're turning our face toward the heavens from which cometh our help. Black men and white men, Spanish men and You listening? Let me help you. Everybody that has black skin, don't beat their babies. Everybody that has black skin, don't leave their wife. Some of us are in our homes teaching our children the fear of the Lord. And we're going to take our nation back. I want to know if anybody helped me put that on the Black Entertainment Network. on us if I'm your brother and I wasn't invited and I was excluded you ought to stay at home I didn't come to play I came to preach right there's the great equalizer right there I don't know what somebody asked me the other day what color are you I said I don't have the faintest idea red as far as I know blood washed I'm blood washed I'm blood washed I was born white but I was reborn red to hell with white pride white power black power yellow power how about some red power hey! hatred and bigotry and children running around with guns shooting one another Crazed, demonized men blowing up federal buildings filled with hatred. Every war on this planet that is being waged right now, not one of them is over land. Every one of them is because my skin is not like your skin. But I got news for you. Skin's only skin deep. If I'm 
If something happened to me, come here, Pastor. If something happened to me and I'm laying on a hospital table, if this man is anywhere around and I need some blood, I hope they'll stick a needle in his arm, run it into my arm, because we're the same blood. Are you listening to me tonight? I want you to let America know we're not standing for this damnable racism. Not one more day. preach tonight sit up we got American folk hating Japanese folk cause of Pearl Harbor got Jews hating Germans Let's quit going back. The cross is the only faction that reaches in two directions. It reaches to your past and it reaches to your future and it pulls them all together in one glorious shout of hallelujah. This is a day that the Lord has made. I'm gonna rejoice and be glad in it. By this shall they know that you pass from death unto life because you have love one for the other. I know you want to stay there a while, but I can't stay. I can't stay. Whether you talk about the Holy Ghost dynamo, me and the bishop, you know that big ugly guy, Jakes, that's it. <laughs> We've been just thinking about and just waiting on the right opportunity to blaze across this country and blood brother crusades and me preaching, him preaching. Let America know we're one, we're one, we're one, we're already one. We're not going to be one, we are one. I hate it, I hate it, I hate racism, I hate it. I hate it both ways. If we went to an all-white march, you'd call us a racist. You know you would. And you'd have a right to. I ain't going nowhere where Donnie McClurkin is not allowed. I'm trying to go on. on death row bigotry hatred racism it'll put you on death row you'll be a walking around dead man religion everybody but I gotta tell the truth I gotta tell the truth God holds me responsible tell the truth tell the truth does the Bible say there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved except the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth does the Bible say that does the Bible say that Jesus said I am the way I am the truth I am the life no man cometh to the Father but by me does the Bible say that 
and tell me how you can belong to an organization. The Roman Catholic Church that pronounces excommunication upon every person who believes in the Reformation doctrine of sola fide, meaning Christ alone, Calvary, nothing more. produces salvation no 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 I'm sorry it's not the cross and catechism it's not the cross and Hail Mary full of grace no sir no sir she is not the co-redemptrix with Jesus Christ of Nazareth no sir that is false doctrine and it will sentence you to death row certificate sister yay yay brother sounding brass I'm a member in good standing at the first church second church third church church of Christ church of God in Christ church of God in Christ of the second millennial reign of the third tribulation. I got my membership certificate. Huh? Let me help you. This is not the Lamb's book of life. No, sir. This won't do it. It's all right, but it won't do it. If you trusted in this, you're sentenced to death row. Religion. Religion. Catholics are going to stand before him. They're going to say, we did the catechism. He'll say, but you never went to the cross. Jews will stand before him. They'll say, would we believe the teachings of Moses? But he'll say, you never went to the cross. Iraqis will stand before him and say, we died in the name of God. But he will say, but you never went to the cross. Now, I'm going to tread on thick ice. I have no more need for Pentecostal religion than I do a Hindu cow or a Shinto shrine or a Buddhist temple this ain't gonna get you there no ain't gonna no no nope when you stand before him on the judgment day he's not gonna say did you clap on two and four or one and three Some folks say, well, we don't have, we don't print a program at our church. I went into a church and they said, sing this hymn, that hymn, then there'll be a prayer by Dr. Doolittle, and then there'll be, oh, we don't do that at our church, Pastor Rob. You don't have to. Everybody knows what's going to happen. You're going to sing three fast songs. Then you're going to sing two slow songs. Then everybody's going to talk in tongues. Then if there's a prophecy, there'll be one. You don't need a program. Everybody's got it memorized. Come on. Am I with a bunch tonight that says whichever way the wind of the Holy Ghost blow it, I'm going to adjust my sails. If your church is dead, take it back. If your church is dead, take it back. Stand up tomorrow morning. Throw your hands up right in the middle of the service and shout hallelujah. And if they throw you out, shake the dust off your feet.
sit down. You people preaching a white boy today. Don't you walk out on me now, you devil. Wendy Bagwell went in the church. Not the same. They brought out some boxes. Started pulling snakes out. Wendy looked at his wife and said, Don't get nervous, honey. Just look for the door. She said, Wendy, I already did and there ain't none. Wendy looked back at her and said, Wonder where do they want one? Help me, somebody. Religion will put you on death row. Modernism. No blood preaching. No cross preaching. No resurrection preaching. No healing preaching. No casting out devils preaching. If you're in a church like that, let me help you. Get out! Run! Run! sell your soul for? Is that it? Makes you look cool. Makes you look so stupid. You look so dumb. Every 33 minutes, listen to me, you devil. Every 33 minutes, there's a death due to this stuff in this country. Every 33 minutes somebody dies by the time your children are 16 years old they will have seen 100,000 beer commercials I wouldn't be letting them stay home from Wednesday night service if I was you By the time your child is 16 years of age in this country, they will have seen people on television drinking this 21 times more than anyone drinking milk and water combined. We're telling our children, got marriage problems? This is it. This will take it all away. How come, how come on those billboards, they don't ever show people off Peachtree Street in Atlanta, Georgia, living in a cardboard box with a brown bottle clutch between their dying fingers? They don't ever show that. I'm preaching better than you're letting on. New York City Police Department in three years made no arrests for crack cocaine. None. For three years. The following 10 months, they arrested 19,000 people. We're talking about an epidemic. 
but it's not just in some back alley. My sister was raised in an upper middle class family. The sister of a preacher. I watched her after an automobile accident and 15 major surgeries be given the second strongest narcotic known to men, Demerol, in boxes and boxes of syringes by the doctors. They gave her 35 prescribed medications a day. I watched her stick needles in her legs and watched her shoot Demerol in her body and watched it run out open sores. This nation is a nation of alcoholics and drug addicts. I'm here to tell you, you can be free. I'm here to tell you, you don't have to snort another line. Pot use, pot use is up. 20% in the neighborhood schools of America this year. We are fighting a war we cannot win because we're using the wrong ammunition. Let the Bible back in school. Let prayer back in school. Let the preacher back in school. I wish somebody would help me tonight. Let these men back in the school. Let them take a Bible and tell the truth. You've tried everything else. This brother needs Jenny Craig in the worst way. It's a lie. It's a lie. Buddhism teaches reincarnation. Talk to me, somebody. It's an endless cycle of leaving this life and coming back and leaving and coming back and the end result in Hinduism also is the end result is that you will eventually be released from the cycle of life of reincarnation and just cease to exist. What a lie that is. When I leave here, I ain't coming back. I ain't coming back. I ain't coming back. I ain't coming back. I ain't coming back as a dog. I ain't coming back as a cow. I'm not coming back. You understand me? When I leave here, there's a book by my bedside, and it tells where I am. Seven million people in America are trusting this book, extra biblical source called the Book of Mormon. Seven million people. They have 30,000 full-time paid missionaries on the streets every day whose job is to do nothing but supply to the Church of Mormon to Mormonism the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints 200,000 converts a year 80% of them made up from former evangelical Christians Their annual budget, you thought we took a little too long for the offering tonight? The annual budget of the Mormon church, $1.3 billion a year. How come Diane Sawyer never put them on the air? I've seen them on hard copy. The New World Translation of the Holy Scripture. Jehovah's Witnesses. Somebody knocked on my door the other day and said, Are you a Jehovah's Witness? I said, I didn't know there was an accident.
They have a little magazine they put out called the Watchtower. 16 million copies a month in 106 languages of the world. In the United States of America, there are 5 million practicing Muslims. Nearly 1 million practicing black Muslims were trained in the art of hatred and racism. Is anybody here? Well, I'd like to go on, but I don't want to leave here just yet because I got a message for somebody. The new age. There's only two problems with it. It's not new and it's not an age. It's Eastern mysticism dressed up in Western clothing using spiritism and demonology as well as entwining with astrology. Are you listening to me right now? Hey, Shirley. Shirley! Shirley! It's just a rock. What we'd like to do, Shirley, is introduce you to the rock. and you dial in those 900 numbers. Put you in touch with a real psychic. Channel you. It's a lie. It's a lie. They put on the bottom of the screen for entertainment only. We're not even smart enough to recognize that. Get you on death row. Lotto.
I've got a sermon I'd like to come back to Atlanta and preach. It's called The Biggest Thieves and Liars in Atlanta, Georgia. You know who it is? People that rob God of the tithe and the offering. That's who they are. Listen, listen. It'll put you on death row. It will put you on death row. If you believe it, shout amen. Yeah. Want me to go on? Yeah. See what I can find around here. Girls, girls, girls. I was in, I was in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Came across one of these signs. It said, the most beautiful girls in the world. Nude. Then right down below it they had, a dancer's wanted apply within sign. <laughs> Somehow, They advertising for girls off the street and then making me believe they're the most beautiful ones in the world. <laughs> Businessmen line up in airports. <laughs> <laughs> For the, for the swimsuit edition, I just like to read about the athletes. <laughs> filth. Pornographic filth. <laughs> Has no business in your home. You tell me how that helps you love your wife. Treat your children right. No, you sit there and fantasize about that and then walk in your bedroom and act, expect your wife to act like some kind of common prostitute and then wonder why she won't. There are more X-rated video stores in the United States of America operating tonight than there are McDonald's hamburger stands. Dr. Lester Summerall called me, told me a story. Here's one for you. Calvin Klein. There you go. Calvin. Child pornography. Pedophilia. President Clinton spoke against this. Gotta say no more about that. Chippendales, ain't they pretty? Looked to me like they played with too many Barbie dolls when they was little. That's what it looked to me like. Woman, 18 ways to be sexier, three women who had sex with other women, men's deepest desire. I didn't go to the porn shop, I just went to the supermarket. Wild thing. Friends, in the last episode, there were about 12 downs and eight hells, and a man and a woman who are not married rolling around together under a fur blanket with a bunch of children looking through the window, and everybody thought it was funny. I like 
the way you're shouting now. In the mid-80s, there was an unceremonial service. There was no preaching, no flowers. There was no song, no poem was read. The immediate family were not in attendance as they chose to believe that the deceased never existed. As 16,000 aborted babies were found in one sealed container. Hear me, America. We are sacrificing the lives of our children on the altars of our lust no different than pagan gods did in the old covenant as they took children and stuck them on stakes and lit them on fire. And we're guilty. AIDS is ravishing our nation. Oh, here's, some, here's some of our superheroes. Here's magic. There's magic. We pay millions of dollars a year. Millions of dollars a year. Because he can put a round ball in a hoop. Now listen to me. I feel sorry for anybody with AIDS. I feel sorry. But I haven't heard any public outcry about the women he infected. Is that your hero? Dion. Thirty-five million dollars just to play for the Dallas Cowboys, million dollar crybabies. We're worshiping like the ancient Athenians. We're worshiping. They said getting ready for the Super Bowl, it's the last gladiators on earth. And then nobody ever complains about where Dion lives. We got something messed up. We are messed up somewhere. Am I telling you if you watch a football game, you're going to hell? I didn't say that. Listen to what I'm saying. But something's wrong in America. When a school teacher gets paid $25,000 a year and these clowns get $35 million. Something's wrong. In this nation last year, we spent 21 times more on alcohol than we did educating our children. Here's the head of John the Baptist. Herod is in hell tonight. He went there for somebody else. A little dancing girl danced before him. He said, I'll give you anything you want up to half of my kingdom. She said, give me John's head on a silver charger. And tonight he lifts up his head in hell. For he took the head of God's preacher. And here's the point. He didn't do it for himself. He begged to get out of it. He did it because of peer pressure. He did it to please somebody. Don't go to hell for anybody, my friend. It is not worth it.
Here's your greatest enemy. Time. God will forgive. Thanks be to his name. But time will not forgive. Spartanburg, South Carolina, a businessman, was in attendance at the J. Harold Smith Revival Meeting. On Tuesday night, when the altar call was given, he grabbed the pew in front of him and squeezed until his knuckles were white. Tears running down his face, his body trembling under the convicting power of the Holy Spirit of God. J. Harold Smith went back to him and said, Sir, give your life. Excuse me, the preacher was named Brother Roberts. Brother Roberts went back to him and said, Give your life to Christ now. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the appointed time right now. He said, I can't do it. I've got a business deal coming up on Friday. And I can't be a Christian and go through with it. But I make you this promise. Next Sunday morning, I'll walk the aisle in this church and I'll give my life to Christ. Friday night, Brother Roberts was summoned to that home way back a long, two-mile-long lane that led back to a beautiful mansion home, back behind a great peach orchard. Brother Roberts had his window rolled down and when he pulled off the highway, he could hear the screams coming from the upstairs bedroom. He approached the home. The door was standing open downstairs. He climbed the stairs, hearing the screams. He walked through the bedroom, and there sat that businessman in the middle of the bed. Handfuls of hair had been yanked from his head. He was beating his head into the wall, screaming like a madman. Saying, Brother Roberts, Brother Roberts, don't let them get me. They're coming to get me. I can feel the flames, Brother Roberts, please. They're coming up the stairs. They've got the chains, Brother Roberts, don't let them get me. He leaped out of the bed, hit the middle of the floor, a corpse. Sunday never came. 17 year old girl, New London, Texas, raised in Pentecostal church. The revival meeting of J. Harold Smith was begged to come to the altar on a Saturday night. She said, I can't do it. I've been raised in this church. Brother Smith, I've been raised in this church. I know what's right and I know what's wrong. She said, Brother. Brother Smith, Friday night, the captain of the football team has invited me to go to the prom, and I know they'll be drinking there, and I know they'll be partying there. I want to go, Brother Roberts, and I know I can't go and be a Christian. But Sunday, I'll give my life to Jesus. Friday night in that little New London, Texas town, looking up in the newspapers, you can find it. A young man thought he'd be cool and Smoke inside the school auditorium lit a match. There'd been an undetected gas leak. An immediate explosion ravaged through that gymnasium where that prom was being held. It was reduced to nothing more than rubble the size of a matchstick. J. Harold Smith was asked to be there. He came, the first body that he identified. He pulled back the sheet and there lay the charred body the angelic face of that 17 year old girl who promised to give her life to Jesus on Sunday but Sunday never came time is your enemy every tick of the clock you're one step closer to eternity you're one step closer to the brink of hell you're one step closer to falling into the doomed and damned endless eternal abyss of the damned souls of humanity but I've got one more thing to say that man on death row 
had a last meal. He had steak and baked potato and peas and ice cream, but that really wasn't what he wanted. What he wanted was for that phone to ring. What he wanted was a reprieve from the governor's office saying, you don't have to die. But it never came. There was a gentleman named Mr. Peace, the most notorious gangster that ever lived in the in infamy of the nation of England. He had murdered women, raped children, ravaged and robbed. They caught up with him. They led him from his cell to the place of execution. A preacher was walking in front of him reading a Bible and he stumbled once or twice across the word hell. Suddenly, Mr. Peace grabbed him by the shoulders and wheeled that preacher around and he looked in his eyes and he said, Preacher, do you really believe that? And the preacher stammered and said, Believe what? He said, Do you really believe in a place called hell? Do you really believe in a place of the eternal incarceration of the damned souls of humanity? Do you believe that? And the preacher said, Well, I suppose I do. Mr. Peace grabbed him by the nap of the neck on his way to his execution and threw him down upon the floor and pointed his finger under his face and said, that's pathetic. For if I truly believed in a place called hell of eternal torment, though the road from the north of England to the south was paved with broken and jagged glass upon my hands and feet would I crawl until my limbs were nothing more than bloody stumps if perchance I might have the opportunity to stand in one man's way and keep him from going to a place like that. And so tonight, I lead you. I lead you up a hillside outside Jerusalem. I lead you. I lead you. I lead you to the cross. Right now you're scheduled for execution. But listen, your phone is ringing. It's not the governor. But it's God on the line. He's saying, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heaven laden, and I will give you rest. He's saying, come and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He's saying, come, let all who will come and drink of the rivers of the water of life freely. For he that the sun sets free is free indeed. Everybody's standing, no one moving. Everybody's standing in this auditorium, no one moving. All over America, hearts are being stilled as Donnie McClurkin comes to the piano. No one moving. If you were going to move, you better have done it before now. This is it. I don't know what has you bound tonight. I don't know what has you sentenced to death row. But I do know this. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Bound by drugs, Jesus is calling. Bound by the torments of religion, Jesus is calling. Bound by sexual perversion and addiction, Jesus is calling. Bound by alcohol and drugs, Jesus is calling. Bound by peer pressure, Jesus is calling. Bound by hatred and racism and bigotry, Jesus is calling. Right now the execution chamber is prepared. Hell is ready. Tonight it has enlarged its borders. But thanks be to God. There's still hope for you. Hell's a reality but so is heaven. Torment is a reality but so is peace. Right now you're bound. You may be in church every week. You may be a deacon. You may be a Sunday school teacher. You may be a preacher, but you're bound. You're bound. Homosexuality, you're bound. 
perversion, you're bound, addiction, you're bound, hatred, you're bound, religion, you're bound, but tonight you can be free. In just a moment, I'm counting to three. Come on, the governor's calling. You're not going to have to face the firing squad. You're not going to have to face the hangman's gallows. You're not ever going to know what hell's like because tonight Jesus is calling. He's calling and saying you can break the chains. You can be free. The door's open. Don't buy the lie. This is it. There's only one kind of sin God can't forgive. That sin that's unrepented. Tonight I'm giving you the opportunity. Let me help you. Let me clarify. You can't do it in your seat. Jesus called every person he called publicly. And tonight he calls you publicly. If you're watching this telecast all across America, Jesus calls you publicly. I'm going to ask you right now to make your phone an altar. Go to your phone right now and dial. There's someone waiting to pray with you. Someone waiting to believe with you. Someone waiting to pray the prayer that will set you free and release you from death row. Record your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Right now, all of this vast auditorium in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm going to ask you in just a moment to slip your hand up and say, Pastor, pray for me. I need freedom. I need freedom tonight. I'm not sure I'm going to heaven. I'm bound. I want to be free. I want to be free. I want to be free. Everybody sees you in church, but nobody knows what's hidden under your bed. Nobody knows what you do when you're alone. Nobody knows what torments you. Don't let pride keep you away from the, the healing hand of Jesus tonight. This is it. I'm counting to three. When I say three, you want to go to heaven and not hell. Serve God and not the devil. Have life and not death. When I say three, shoot your hand up in the air. Do it quickly. Don't go to hell for anybody. It's not worth it. One, two, time is your enemy. Three, raise that hand right now. Leave it up. 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 Every hand raised. Every hand raised. Every hand raised. Hear me tonight. From the top row of this auditorium to the front row. Every hand raised. While Donnie McClurkin sings, I want you to get out of your seat. I want you to come right here and meet me at this altar. Do it now. Do it quickly. We're going to pray. Come on. Come on. Come on. Run if you have to. Run. Get here as quickly as you can. Church, let them know they're making the right decision. All over America right now. We're watching. You're seeing men and women respond by the hundreds. They're pouring down every aisle. On the other end of your telephone line, we're waiting to pray for you. America needs revival. America needs to get back to the cross. I want to help you do it. You can break the chains. You can be free. Do it right now. Dial that number. Let's pray together. Come on, down every aisle. Come on, make room. Make room. Make room. Come on. Jam all the way back as far as the eye can see. Come on. Come on. Preachers, get down here and lie in the front of this. Begin to pray with these folks. Come on. Come on. Come home. Come home. From the top row of the balcony. Come on. Come on. Come on. Get as close as you can. Get as close as you can. Come on. God, break the awful curse of sin tonight. Break the power of demon spirits. Loose and liberate every man, every woman, every child. Oh, God, do it tonight by your mighty power. Do it tonight as these men and women pray. Give them the miracle they seek. Give them the miracle they seek tonight, Lord. Break the chains of bondage. Hear me tonight. If there's somebody around you, you're unsure whether they're ready to meet God, just slip over and take them by the hand and say, I'll go with you. I'll pray with you. I'll go with you. Don't leave tonight without Jesus. Don't leave tonight in bondage. You can be free. You can be free. still coming look at this church look at this tonight somebody shout unto God with the voice of child somebody shout this as far as we can see they're still coming oh God send a revival send a revival Lord send a revival send a 
revival tonight, Lord. Send a revival tonight like a wind of the Holy Ghost come. Free, free tonight. No other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. In the name of Jesus, come on. Get as close as you can. Get as close as you can. Come on. Come on. Still coming. Still coming. Still coming. Church, put your hands together and give God a shout. Will you do it? Come on. We've got victory tonight. The devil is losing. The devil is losing. The kingdom of darkness is losing. Come home. Come home. They're still coming as far back as I can see. Still coming, pouring in, pouring in. Come on, get as close as you can. It's important. It's important that you come. It's important that you come. We'll wait. We'll wait, we'll wait, we'll wait. It took the devil years to get you in this bondage. We'll wait for Jesus to set you free. America tonight, we need a revival, preachers. We need a revival. We need God to move again. We need to get in the altar. We need to pray till victory comes. We need to trust and obey. Right now. Right now, I want you to pray with me. I want you to pray with me. God sees you. God sees. God knows. God understands. We're going to pray. It took some of you years to get in this bondage. But tonight in an instant... Jesus is going to set you free. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Can I get a witness? This is it. This is it. I want you to pray. I want you to pray out loud so you can hear it with your own ears. Everybody in this building, pray. You know, can I just say this? I know the hour's late. I understand that. But you know, if, if I was lining Christians up and laying hands on them and watching them fall down, nobody would care how late it was. We've forgotten what we're supposed to be rejoicing about. And God is sending me to major auditoriums all over America to call in the harvest. Do you see this tonight? God crown our altars with victory again. In the name of Jesus, let's pray. Repeat after me, Heavenly Father. I come to you tonight just as I am. Without one plea. I'm guilty. I'm a sinner. Oh God, I yearn to be free. Lord Jesus Christ, tonight I renounce the works of the devil. I renounce you, Satan. Get out of my life. Lord Jesus Christ, I accept you, believe you, and confess you as my personal Savior. I believe with all my heart you'll give me the power to become a son of God. I trust you now. Give my life to you now. I'm going to pray. I'm going to read the Bible. And I'm going to go to church where they act, sing, and preach. Just like we heard tonight. Lord Jesus, I'm yours. Now get ready because I'm going to pray for you. The delivering power of God is going to come upon you. 
God is going to release you from bondage, addiction, perversion, and power. Now, Satan, I adjure you by God standing in covenant blood. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, come out of them. Come out. 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 And set them free. Now shout, I'm free. Shout it again. seconds and pray. somebody shout that knows you're free tonight. 